Hello, it's Jennifer from Sea Lemon. Last year, I saved all my paper scraps and trimmings in hopes that I could use it to try paper making, and today is that video. I also have some junk mail and invoices to add to the mix, and I think this will be a good way to recycle all of this. And I'm also just really curious to see what all my past year scraps look like all mixed together. I am a total beginner to paper making and you guys gave me a lot of good suggestions on the community tab, thank you. Apparently there are a lot of different ways to make paper and of course there are so many YouTube videos on the topic, but the most helpful resource that I found was this book called The Paper Maker's Companion by Helen Hybert. I was able to check out this book online from my local library and I found it really helpful. The first step is to turn all my paper into smaller pieces. I could rip it up like this, but since I have a paper shredder, why not let that do all the work for me? Through this process, I also organized my paper by weight and coating. And also I read that any paper with a varnish or glossy coating has a harder time breaking down. I have a lot of coated cardstock scraps, so I made that into its own pile. I predict standard copy paper is the easiest to break down into pulp. I also shredded a few sheets of this purple scrap paper, which I rarely use, in case I want to add some color to the other pulp. At this point, many people use a blender to turn the paper into pulp, but it shouldn't be one that you plan on using for food, because the paper may ruin the blades and bits of pulp will get into the blender and then it's no longer food safe, it's contaminated. I like my blender and so the other option is to go buy one from a secondhand store or buy one just for this purpose. I don't wanna do that. So I'm going to travel back in time and use the ancient method of beating the paper to a pulp. Yes, it is possible, and I'm going to soak the shreds in water overnight so it's easier to later smash them up. After hours of soaking, I can tell by the color of the paper that it is saturated and the fibers are probably softer and more malleable. I'm not so sure about the coated paper. It might need longer time to soak in and soften, but we'll see how it goes. For the beading process, I'm going to put a towel down to dampen the noise that it's going to make, and I'm putting all my stuff on this cutting board, which I only use for projects, not food. A cutting mat also works, and I do like that this board has this spill collection area for extra water. I'm going to use a meat tenderizer to pulp this paper, but I also read you could use a mallet, even a baseball bat. I've also seen some videos where they just use a piece of wood or a heavy stick. Let's start with the copy paper and maybe add some extra color pieces in, like the colored cardstock, to thicken it up. I read to let the weight of the mallet do the work for you, so I didn't really put too much arm muscle into this. Turned in the edges to also get beat and also added extra paper when I felt like it. From an outside perspective, I could see how this looks like a lot of work, but it actually wasn't that bad. I did this for about 10 to 15 minutes until the paper was just really tiny grains of pulp. I found out that if you don't want to make paper right away, you can keep it wet and stored in an airtight container or a bag. It will keep in room temperature for a few days, or if you need longer time, you can put it in the refrigerator. Otherwise, if it's longer and you don't put it in the fridge, it will start fermenting and stinking. I did notice if there was a dominant color of paper, it would really take over the rest of the paper. I did have leftover pigmented water, which could also be used to dye other pulp. To be honest, I think this method was more fun than turning on a blender, and I found it kind of therapeutic, kind of like a mini workout. In case you're not familiar, the mold forms the pulp into paper, and the decal controls the shape of the paper by adding a frame or border around it. Most tutorials will show how to DIY a mold and decal with two photo frames and a roll of window screen by stapling it to the photo frame. But I don't wanna ruin any of my picture frames, and again, I don't feel like going anywhere and buying new things. Is there a more simple, 
easier, less expensive option. I did see in the Paper Makers Companion book that there's a children's section and they suggested that you can use a needlepoint screen or embroidery mesh. This stuff is, <laughs> this stuff is usually easy to find um, in craft stores or online and it's rigid enough so I don't need to add a wooden frame to support it. I made sure to keep the top of the mold the textured side of the mesh because the other side is more flat and slick, which will make the pulp just fall off. For the decal, I'm using this extra strong duct tape, which I already had on hand, and using this small postcard as a reference because I think this is a manageable size for a beginner. I cut an inch border around the postcard size, so that will be enough room for me to hold the mold and also create a decal then taped around that border. Flip it over and then trim the corners so I can fold over the extra tape. And now it's ready to use. I think you could also cut out different shapes from this mesh and add a decal by just taping a border around it. And if you really wanna keep things simple, you don't have to add a decal. You could just use this mesh on its own. I'm also going to try this steel wire mesh, which is used for air vents, and it is also rigid enough on its own, so I don't need to add a frame to it. I definitely want to add tape around this as well because the edges can be a little sharp. I usually store pads of paper in this bin, but today I'm going to use it to make paper. And I'm using the lid to this container as the area where I press the paper. There will be a lot of water on this tray and I like that there's a lip around it to catch it and protect my table. Speaking of, make sure to do this in a area where you don't mind a lot of water getting or protect your table with some towels or waterproof tablecloth. You could also do this in your bathroom or kitchen. I definitely found it handy to keep a small towel draped over my shoulder so at any time I can dry my hands. To press the extra water out of the paper sheets, I'm using craft felt. I chose this because I like that it has a fine texture which won't leave extra texture on the paper. To press the paper, I already have a brayer which I think will work. You could also use a rolling pin or even your hands to press down. And a standard sponge to soak up extra water or help release the paper from the mold. Alright, let's make some paper. I added some water to the vat and I didn't really know how much to add. You kind of have to do some trial and error here. If it's too watery, add more pulp. If there's too much pulp, add more water. I'm going to start out with the pulp that looks like coleslaw, slosh it around, and try to pull my first sheet of paper. I read if you shake it left to right or in one direction, it will make the grain of the pulp go one way so the paper will be stronger in the end. And if you don't like it, you can do what is called a kiss off, which is basically tapping the pulp back into the water. Before each pull, you want to stir the pulp around, and it did take me a few tries to get a sheet that I liked. I am tilting my mold so excess water drips off, and before I press it to the felt, I'm wetting it slightly because I learned that the pulp will not stick to dry felt. Now I'm pressing my first sheet onto that piece of felt, soaking up extra moisture and also trying to release it from the mold with the sponge, I learned this technique is called couching. I think that's how you say it. I am sorry if I mess up any terms here of professional paper making. So you can see it didn't work out and that's going to happen. I made a lot of pieces of paper that did not turn out. This process took a while to figure out and it's not as easy as I thought. All right, let's try this again. Sometimes the paper just released from the mold just alone if I just pressed it with my hands and there was extra water, which does not help in the end because then the felt is super heavy and hard to work with. For this batch, I'm going to try a pile of sheets, which is basically a stack of sheets that you then press and trying to align the sheets in the same position so they get pressed evenly. Pressing three sheets at a time. And I learned you don't have to press that hard, otherwise it will distort the pulp. 
and sometimes because this paper is so small, I've just found it easier to press it with my hands. And then I can use the felt to carry the sheets onto the drying process. I now see why you guys suggested to wear gloves. This is a fun and tactile thing to do, but it really does dry out your hands. So if you have sensitive skin, I do recommend wearing some gloves. Turns out there are many ways to dry the paper, and one of them, which I also read in that book, was to try using a window. A sunny window will make it dry faster, and you could also try using a mirror. I like the idea that it's on the inside of the house so I don't have to worry about bugs flying into the paper. The flat surface will give the paper a smooth finish and it will make it dry flat. A word of advice, if you can, try to avoid colored felt because the red from this ended up dripping down the window onto the windowsill. It didn't stain it, but if I left it there, it might have. To press any air pockets, Use the felt and not your fingers, because the felt won't stick to the pulp, but your fingers do, which ends up ruining your paper. Like many things in this whole activity, it took a while to figure out the process. It, sometimes it just didn't work. To see what would happen, I also tried a towel. I've seen a lot of YouTube videos use towels. The pulp stuck to it really well, but too well because then it wouldn't release onto the window. I also tried a microfiber cloth, which worked better than the towel in my opinion. I'd say it's about the same easiness as using the felt. It might just add a bit of texture to the paper. But as you can see, my paper is pretty thick and chunky and textured already, so it didn't really matter. I did keep forgetting to damp the first sheet of felt so the pulp wouldn't stick to it. And when more gaps would appear in the mold, I knew it was time to add more pulp. And to show you what the mesh looks like without a taped border or a decal, it's a super quick way to make a mold, but you will have some extra gaps on the sides from your fingers holding it. Also testing out the metal screen, which at first I didn't really like because the screen bends. It's also larger than what I was used to working with, but I did find that it picked up finer pieces of pulp, which made a more even surface of paper. After making many sheets of paper, I found it easier to make one sheet at a time and not do a whole stack. This made it easier to release the paper onto a window so the piece of felt wasn't dripping water all over. Now I want to add a new color of pulp to the vat, but I don't want the old pulp mixing in, so I want to change the water in the vat, and when it comes time to emptying the vat, maybe you're just done making paper, whatever you do, do not pour pulp down your drain. I strained the paper over an extra piece of mesh over a bowl. You can keep the excess to make more pulp, or let it dry outside and later peel it off the screen to recycle it. When the felts became too soaked to reuse, I let them dry outside, then used a lint roller to clean them and they're ready to use. I found that when the pulp sits for a few days, the fibers kind of dry out and close up, so I re-beat the pulp and I found that that worked a lot better. The fibers were more open to soaking up water, making the paper more smooth and even. So if I did this again, I would make the paper right after the pulp is made. I also think it's better to have a towel underneath the felt that the paper is holding to soak up extra water. I also found it easy to keep the pulp in the vat and just put the lid on it and save it for the next day I'm ready to make more paper. By the time I was done with this paper making adventure, I had taken up a lot of windows in the house and I let them dry overnight or until they were dry to the touch. There was extra dry pulp left over on my windows and I found it really easy to clean off. The paper looks a lot better after it's dry and the color looks a lot lighter than I thought it would be. The first round of sheets that I made with the embroidery mesh turned out a lot thicker, but I did also use the thicker pulp that I had. It almost feels kind of like an egg carton texture. The embroidery mesh does leave a little grid of squares on the paper. I think when you make your own paper, you definitely have to just go in 
thinking that they're not going to be like normal sheets that you buy from manufacturers. They're going to be imperfect and have that handmade character. I did consider making a book from them, but at this point I don't, I'm almost like worried to fold them in half because they'll break. Yeah, I don't think <laughs> there's like no grain established, so maybe that's why it's not folding right. I think this is more for decorative like just individual sheets. For the wire screen that I use, I'm really curious to see how that paper folds in half. I mean, it folds a little bit more clean than the embroidery mesh, but it still, it still feels really delicate. I think this type of paper would make a cute gift tag or an embellishment to a scrapbook or maybe add it to a junk journal but it's definitely not a paper that I would paint on or draw on just because of the texture. And also there's no sizing on it. And I didn't explore that in this video, but sizing is basically adding a form of glue to the pulp so it seals it in. This whole process did take some time to figure out. I'm not gonna lie, uh, it was more difficult than I thought it would be, but I think this was a good introduction to paper making. I think this could be a fun thing to do at home. It, definitely if you have a lot of scraps to recycle. If I did try this again, I think I would want to try a more traditional mold and decal to see how it compares. If you have any tips to share, I would love to read your paper making experience in the comments and hit that like on this video if you found it helpful and enjoyable. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and hit the bell for notifications so you know when I post a video. And a big thank you to my studio support patrons. They help me make more videos like this. I'll put the Patreon link here if you're interested in joining and all links are in the description. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.